All right, so uh, I'm going <laughs> to apologize here. Um, well, kind of a good news, bad news situation for this video. Um, the I'll start with the bad news. Um, bad news is my PC somehow ate the footage I had for part two of the Fornovo playthrough. I literally have no idea. I'm, I'm a computer savvy and literate individual. I've been used YouTube for most of my career and life. I have used video footage and equipment for most of my life. And I cannot explain how uh, part two of this playthrough has simply disappeared. Um, it's disappeared from the recording device. It's disappeared from my PC. It also disappeared from YouTube somehow. Um, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what's going on there. And so uh, the bad news is that I don't actually have the second part of the playthrough for you. Um, as it was happening. Um, now, the good news uh, is that it didn't last actually too much longer. It only had one, one more activation round from as far as you've watched up to this point. And essentially what ended up happening was the Italians over on this flank decided to charge the French. The French countercharged, and the French rolled just like an insane countercharge hit against them, wiped out two Italian cavalry units, and killed the Italian uh, cavalry leader that was here. And that ended up sending the Italian army along to zero. So the French won it kind of... Um, very shortly, I mean, literally the activation cycle after you last watched part one. So uh, you're not missing much from a gameplay perspective. Um, what you are missing was sort of my extended thoughts on the game and the system. And uh, I want to get into that. Uh, it won't be contemporaneous as it was when I originally did it, but I wanted to get into it real quick and let you know what I think of the game because you've seen enough kind of the gameplay and sort of the unfolding, um, <clears throat> uh, unfolding like moment to moment uh, activity that happens in the game. And I had a lot of thoughts. So I'm going to try and collect those together here uh, sort of more succinctly than I did in the video and, um, and uh, let you know about Fornova 1495. So give me a moment. Okay, so first of all, just wanted to touch on some of the things that I really like about the game. The, the components, the, the counters, super beautiful, super nice. I love the area movement system, as I talked about in the last video. I love the way that it makes you think tactically about your um, positioning and what have you. And some of the systems are pretty novel. The activation system in particular, there's kind of a fog of war around, you know, whether or not your army is going to get to do anything or any of your commanders are going to get to do anything on any given turn. And the uh, and so it creates like a real tension about like every move that you make. There's a really important decision point there about do you activate you know your 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 good men at arms leader but put him in a vulnerable position knowing he may not get to go again before he gets counterattacked, um, and ultimately it creates like a, a real nice tension, not knowing how many or who is going to uh, activate on any given turn, and that's awesome. I really like <clears throat> um, the river weather system as well. Um, it's really well modeled, and it, uh, it has a lot of impact on the game. Um, although, you know, in this game, you didn't get to see it. We had just straight rain. We never actually got to a storm or a flooded turn. But you could easily see it going the other way with die rolls, and it is actually more likely as the game goes along that you get to a, a flooded stage of the river. Four scenarios in the box. Uh, I love it when games have sort of a single engagement presented four different ways. You've got the historical scenario. You've got the um, alternate history scenario. Um, there's just a lot of ways to play this game um, with sort of some different... Um, setups and whatnot, so that's really nice. Um, in general, just it's it's a really nice production, um, and it's uh, really different from other like you know uh, this setting and this sort of uh, grand tactical approach to like what it's covering. Certainly, this topic, the the um, French and Italian wars, there's really not a ton out there on it, so that's really cool. Um, what I don't like about the game is a lot actually. Um, there is so these player aids, while they are very visually interesting, as I showed you, um, there is so much information missing from these player aids in order to play the game well. From a moment to moment basis, I was consulting the rule book literally every time I had to do anything. And the rules are written in such a way that uh, these aren't, this is the one that came in the box. I was using an updated version, but the rules are written in such a way that like they're very good telling you procedurally how to do something, but there's so much stuff in the rules that are found only in the rules that are not on this player aid that you need to play the game that it is extremely frustrating and extremely high friction to play this game <clears throat> um, moment to moment if you um, are playing this with someone and you're both trying to learn it you're gonna have a really bad time um, I had a really bad time playing solo having read the rule book twice having looked through all of this stuff gotten all the updates um, Anytime I wanted to do anything in this game, I had to go to the rule book and find the section and read through the procedures and figure out if I was doing it right or not. There's so much of this game that is being weighed down by its ambition. There's so much stuff that needed to be stripped away. There's so much fat here that just makes the experience so unenjoyable moment to moment that it is such a grind to play. Um, 
And that is super unfortunate because I really like what it's trying to do and I really like sort of the systems it's trying to take. But it really needed someone to come in, a developer, um, to come in and strip away all the extraneous stuff that has turned this into just kind of a bloated mess. Um, so I'll give you an example. Here's the player aid for, um, you know, charge combat. And you can see charge combat. It tells you sort of what your modifiers are and, and how you, you know, what other units might do. And here's the flow chart. What it's not showing you is how to calculate strength for uh, a particular uh, charge combat. And that is fairly involved and is laid out in the rules in such a way that it could have been put on the player aid. Let me show you. Here's charge combat. Here is how you generate all of your, your base dice for doing a charge. There's many different things. And if you're a defender, how you, what, based on what unit you are, how you get, how many dice you get, right? That stuff, nowhere on the player aid under charge combat. It's under one of these steps, and then you have to go to the rules, and then you have to read it. And good luck, by the way, memorizing this with the number of types of different exceptions and rules exceptions and exceptions to exceptions there are in this. Um, uh, in this. I mean, even looking at charge, you can see, oh, is the defender wheeling in place? Well, the defender can't always wheel in place. The defender can only wheel in place under a certain set of particular conditions. Those aren't on the player aid anywhere. Um, there's so much missing from what's from the player aid that this player aid is basically useless. Um really the only thing to use it for would be this armor table, which you need, and maybe the movement point chart, but that's all stuff that you can start to remember pretty easily. There's a whole page on the back just talking about units, unit types, which is nice, but there needed to be probably another second fold out like this for just stuff like how you calculate base combat strength. And by the way, this is different in charge combat, it's different in range combat, it's different in artillery combat, it's different every type, it's different in close combat, it's different in every type of combat you do, and none of the four types of combat have the, how you generate the strength for your unit Units, and there's a lot of exceptions and a lot of special considerations based on positioning what types of unit, who they're attacking, all of that stuff. Phalanx. There's another great example. The game has rules, all these rules for a phalanx unit <clears throat> and what they can do. And in no uh, part of the player aid does it give you all of the stuff you need to know about phalanx. The scenario literally starts that I played with two units set in phalanx, and this is stuff that you need to know in order to use them effectively. And so anytime I went to go activate the Swiss phalanx units, I had to come look at this part of the rules and figure out what that meant in relation to something else. It's just a mess. It's just a mess to try and play. If you're trying to play this with someone who doesn't know how to play it, uh, it is going to be a bad time. I think even if you didn't know how to play it with someone who knew how to play it, you would still find that you're doing things wrong. The, really, the only way to learn this game is not how I did it, and the way to learn this game is to uh, play it with someone who is very well uh, um, familiar with the system and the rules and plays it a lot, because them teaching you is going to be the easiest way to do it. There's a lot to learn here. There's so much here, by the way, that I had to make my own player aid, and I had to make my own player aid of all the stuff in the rules that was not on the actual player aid. Uh, you know, close combat retreat modifiers, what happens there? Um, you know, range combat fire strength, how do you calculate how many dice range combat units get? Um, all these different types of range units being able to retreat in certain situations, range units can retreat into woods in certain ways sometimes. Uh, you roll a die for that, not on the player aid. Uh, here's the charge stuff that I was talking about earlier, all of the procedures for how you meet a charge um, if you're defending and when you can meet a charge and when you can't, it's almost impossible to remember. This ability called breaking through to the other side, which I never had to use, but could have come up in the battle, um, not on the player right anywhere as a reference, anywhere. Um, and what you roll for that and how you calculate it. It's in the buried in the rule book. Um, it's easy, even easy stuff, like first player determination, how you use battle plan shits. The leader casualty modifier table, this right here, you need any time you check for a leader to go uh, go down, which could happen quite a bit. There's a lot of leaders in this game, and this is nowhere on the player aid. So you kind of get the idea. Anyways, this player aid that I created came out to seven pages, and this isn't everything that I needed to reference. There was a lot more that I had to go to the rule book a bunch, and I was just tired of cutting and pasting stuff how artillery moves, what size of artillery, and how many movement points they get when they're breaking up and, and uh, breaking down and setting up. Just easy stuff that, like, if, you know, there had been a real playtest of this game, a rigorous playtest, any developer would have come in and said, okay, there's either A, not enough player aids, or B, too much stuff here um, that's really fiddly and, and minute that we can't get... Um, our heads around in a very like easy to play way. There we like I said, there needed to be a really vast stripping out of all of the stuff, um, of all of the sort of extraneous stuff that made moment to moment gameplay extremely frustrating and um, not fun. And that's unfortunate because I really wanted to like this game, and I think some of the stuff that it's doing is uh, really interesting, and I think other games could take a lot of um, 
uh, cues from how it sort of approaches the grand tactical like situation on the map, uh, especially for an area movement game. I think some of that stuff is brilliant, but there's just so much other unfun stuff that is. Um, it makes worth playing this game, in my opinion, probably not worth learning. It is the amount of fun you get out of this is not enough to go through the fight that you're going to have with the rules in the system. Now, I know there's going to be another game in this series coming out at hopefully at some point, And maybe by then they will he will have the designer will have been able to smooth over how involved and um, how involved and um, non intuitive the system is. But it really needs it really needs that work to be put into it for the next one. It really needs um, a set of eyes to look at this and say, okay, yes, for fidelity's sake, I realize you have this rule in here, but we don't need it for the gameplay because it's not really adding anything. It, this just needs to be all slimmed down and made a lot more streamlined in order to have some fun playing it. Um, there's, th like I said, three different lines of sight for different things you want to do, and they all have slightly different variations on how you calculate and, and their effect on what's happening. It's just, it's just a lot. And then on top of that, and like, you can tell that this game needed some more work because if you go to the constant world page for it, the forum page, it's just over months, pages and pages and pages of players asking questions about cases that arise from the way the rules are written and the designer having to go through and answer and answer and make revisions. And that's why we have a 1.3 of the rules. And even in the 1.3 of the rules, there are still some unsettled questions on edge cases that come up. And it's just clear that it wasn't finished. Now, I, I have not played um, Eagles of the Empire. I understand that it's a little bit simpler uh, than this, and so that may make it more playable, but I think too much stuff was probably added to that frame to try and achieve something when maybe uh, for the Middle Ages um, or for the um, medieval period when maybe it would have been better to like not be so devoted to that system. I haven't played it, so I can't say. But um, it does seem like uh, there's too much going on here and not enough uh, sort of reward for going through it. So ultimately, that was my opinion of Fornova 1495 after all was said and done. Like I said, the game ended very quickly after the last video ended, um, and I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get that... Um, uh, recovered and figure out what happened to it, but uh, I, I'll try and make sure that doesn't happen again, so sorry to disappoint those of you who are looking forward to it, but I did want to get my final thoughts down because I didn't want to leave you hanging about this game. Um, you know, is it worth playing again at some point? Uh, I'm going to hang on to it for now, mostly because the production quality is really nice, and if I find someone who um, who really knows the system, I'd like to play it with them, and especially I'd like to play the, the um, sort of longer scenario that starts in the morning with the French kind of strung out here and then have to reposition for the Italian attack. Um, and I'm also holding out hope that potentially a um, new game in the system will revise the rules to be um, more retroactively playable and that I can come back to this at some point and have a lot more fun with it. Because as it stands, I didn't really have a lot of fun moment to moment trying to play it. It was just a real drag. Um, so anyways, that's for Nova 1495. Thanks for uh, bearing with me while I try to sort this uh, problem out with the content. And I promise the next couple of videos don't have that problem. I have triple checked now. So thanks.